an address by a foreign leader to both Houses of Parliament is not an automatic right, it is an earned honour. Let's be honest, if there is a leader of a foreign country, it would be a good idea to have them speak so that we can hear and understand their ideas. Moreover, there are many precedents for state visits to take place to our country which do not include an address to both Houses of Parliament. OK, that's fair enough. We don't have to allow Donald Trump to speak to the Houses of Parliament, but, I mean, what are we going to gain by stopping him from doing so? I would like to hear the man speak. That's the first point. The second point is, in relation to Westminster Hall, there are three key holders to Westminster Hall. The Speaker of the House of Commons, the Speaker of the House of Lords, and the Lord Great Chamberlain. Ordinarily, we are able to work by consensus, and the hall would be used for a purpose, such as an address or another purpose, by agreement of the three key holders. Now, this man speaking is John Burkow. He is the Speaker of the House of Commons, which is the first of the three titles he mentioned, and also the lowest of the three titles he mentioned. And he didn't say just then that this was in any way um, a regulation or law. He just said, ordinarily, we would all agree. That's all he said. He said, usually we agree about these things. He, he hasn't explained what kind of procedure there is or whether it is important for any reason that all three of them agree or if it goes down to a vote where two of the three have to decide he hasn't explained that at all all he said is usually we just agree i must say to the honorable gentleman to all who signed his early day motion and to others with strong views about this matter on either side of the argument the matter that he's talking about of course is whether we should allow donald trump to speak in the House of Parliament, not whether Donald Trump should be allowed to visit England at all, which is another issue which makes me laugh, since he has businesses in Scotland. You guys realise he has a hotel in Scotland, right? I'm sure among other things. That before the imposition of the migrant ban, I would myself have been strongly opposed to an address by President Trump in Westminster Hall. After the imposition of the migrant ban by President Trump, I am even more strongly opposed to an address by President Trump in Westminster Hall. Well, the Muslim ban, obviously, is what it's been called, was not a ban. The longest period of time uh, that anybody would have been banned had the motion gone through would have been 120 days. This is nothing irregular. It's not happened for a few years now. I'm sure it might be the first time in your lifetime that you can remember a country or a series or a group of countries being um, restricted. And that's because we haven't had any leaders who are willing to put their boot down firmly and say, you know, I don't mind not having your commerce anymore because it comes down to tourism and travel and all money, basically. OK, money is at the bottom of it all. When you ban a country, when you ban the citizens of a country from visiting your country, you are essentially banning their business. You're banning them from coming and giving you money, which is something that not many people want to do. It takes balls to stand up and say, look, that country is dangerous and we, we want to vet those people more thoroughly. Now, I've heard it quite said quite a lot recently that, uh, you know, all humans are equal and we can't judge any societies as better or worse than any other societies. And I'm pretty sure you all know that that's, that's bullshit, right? I mean, we're all born the same but then we're taught very differently, okay? So depending where you're raised depends on what your values are gonna be. 
and the values of Muslims. It's no, you know, it's, it's not hidden. It's no secret that it's no secret that Muslims look down upon women, that they treat them as half a person. And the argument that I'll hear to that is that Muslims were the first to allow women to vote. It, I mean, OK, it's absurd. But it makes sense because it was written in the Quran that a woman's voice is worth half that of a man's. And so therefore it was the first time that it was written down that women specifically had a value. You know, most cultures took this for granted. Some like Christian cultures just said women are shit and it took them a while to progress in society. But no, Muslims, they were more progressive because they realized that women were at least worth half that of a man. The problem is, of course, that they still think that today, you know, so as progressive as they might have been in the past, they're not anymore. Am I am I getting off the subject? <laughs> so far as the Royal Gallery is concerned, and again, I operate on advice. I do not perhaps have as strong a say in that matter. It is in a different part of the building, although customarily an invitation to a visiting leader to deliver an address there would be issued in the names of the two speakers. What he's saying, I think, is basically they're going to offer Donald Trump to come down and have a bit of a speak to some official pompous bastards, right? And usually he would receive some kind of letter and this letter, sorry, I'll, I'll pronounce my T's for you. This particular letter would usually have his name upon it. But on this particular occasion, he would like it to be removed. I would not wish to issue an invitation to President Trump to speak in the Royal Gallery. You know, it really doesn't matter these days. Like, the guy has so many other platforms. Um, all you're basically doing is sticking your fingers in your ears and going, la, 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 and refusing to listen to the man's points. And why is that? So far, it's because of the Muslim ban, which obviously, as I've said, was only for 120 days. And the list of countries was written up by Obama, not you know, personally, it'll, it'll have been his cabinet that wrote that list of countries up. But this is something that both sides can agree on if they chose to. Both sides can, in America, can come together and say, look, we both realise that these countries are dangerous and needed to be, need to be treated as such. And in England, it's got fuck all to do with us, right? It did not affect any English people. I keep hearing reports that certain people were restricted from traveling and it's bullshit, absolutely bullshit. If they were the only way that somebody from England would have been restricted from going to America is if they had dual nationality with one of the other countries that was bad and they happened to try to travel on like the one day that it was enforced. That's fuck all. You know, in order for that to happen, for all those circumstances to come together, you'd have had to find that person specifically and then send them on a flight. There's no way. It's it's ridiculous. Sorry, I say ridiculous too much, but the world is a ridiculous place. And I conclude by saying to the honourable gentleman this. We value our relationship with the United States. If a state visit takes place, that is way beyond and above the pay grade of the speaker. However, what he's saying is basically it's not his job to go talk to America and he's fine for Americans to come over here and spend money, but he just doesn't want Donald Trump in his house. As far as this place is concerned, I feel very strongly that our opposition to racism and to sexism... OK, how is it racist? Blocking Muslims, how is that racist? How is it racist to defend your country against real, genuine threats in the world? Do you people know what a war is? Like, you realise those things actually happen in real life, right? There is such a thing as war. And now you're just throwing sexism in there. Now, the only 
like fact that you've put in there is the muslim ban so am i to assume that the muslim ban is somehow both racist and sexist or are you just inferring that he's sexist as well or am i supposed to think that comments about grabbing pussies is somehow sexist i mean where where is this sexism coming from why do people keep saying that donald trump's sexist he's not sexist he's a fucking idiot there's a big difference and our support for equality before the law and an independent judiciary why is he against independent judiciary he's not against either of those things donald trump is absolutely for those things the same as any other human being on the planet surely Show me evidence of the contrary. You've just pulled that out of your ass. That's come right out of your bum hole. That's like me saying I'm against John Burkow because I believe that human beings are equal. And everybody cheering for me. I mean, what the fuck? I'm, I'm sure you actually believe that humans are equal, don't you? Are hugely important considerations in the House of Commons. Point of order, Mr. Skinner. Further to that point of order, two words, well done. I have no idea who Mr. Skinner is. Um, well done. Well done for saying something ridiculous. <laughs> I'll tell you what, John Burkow, you are not allowed anywhere near my property. I refuse to allow you to speak um, to my family or anything like that because you're a racist, sexist, homophobe and I don't allow racist, sexist, homophobic behaviour. I've got no evidence for that, of course, so, you know, there's no way of me proving it, but you just strike me as the type. Is that is that all this is? you just, you know, having a go? And, and the BBC considers this to be newsworthy. I mean, these are the people that run our country and tell us what's happening all amalgamated into one one place ah, that makes me sad that makes me a sad sad boy